going to be kind of short. And I, I think this one's going to be kind of short too, but you never know. Um, Hebrews 11. We'd like to thank Brother Duncan for that wonderful song just a few minutes ago. I hope it blessed you as much as it blessed me. Hebrews 11. Um, we're going to read, starting in verse 24, 24 through 29. 24 through 29. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For, when he, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you've allowed us to be here once again. We, we just ask that as we look to your word that you would be with us, that we could use the example given here of Moses and the things that were accomplished by faith, not in himself, not in, in, in any strength, not in the, the nation of Israel, but in you. Help us that we would have such a faith that we would look to the reward that is promised. Help us now that it, it, it would give us encouragement. We understand there are some that couldn't, couldn't be here because of sickness or sickness in the family, and we just ask that you would encourage them at this time. As the word goes out, not only to those of us here in the building, but as you have given us the medium where we can reach people outside of this building and miles away, on the other side of the world even, we just ask that you would bless it, that as we cast our bread upon the water, it will return after many days. Forgive me of my sins and my inabilities. Clear my head of all my thoughts that you would speak through me. guide the stones which are in my sling that they may hit the points that you want reached all these things we ask in Jesus precious name for his sake amen I'd like to preach this morning the effects of faith the effects of faith and it's kind of like a I guess it was last week we preached, preached on the ripples of faith. Now those ripples of faith, we talked about Moses' parents. And we talked about uh, how the things that they did affected Moses, the next generation. And through Moses affected Israel as a whole. But these are personal effects that were uh, uh searching for a great word for that, but basically personal effects that affected Moses in his own personal faith. I was telling Sister Pi as I was telling her what we were preaching today and that uh, uh, you might recall many months ago we were doing a, a series out of Hebrews 11, the Hall of Faith, Heroes Hall of Faith, a Hebrews Hall of Faith, and I remember at the time there was a reason why we skipped this particular section. And I, I'm sure I meant to go back to it, if I recall correctly. But in posting uh, and, and uh, downloading these sermons here recently, I realized there was a section of several verses that I never touched upon. So this is a delayed, a belated entry 
as was last week and Lord willing as next week will be to that series. You see, there was grace before there was faith. There was grace. When, when uh, um, we quote that famous verse, and usually we quote the two of them, at least two of them together. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now most people will, will dwell on the fact that we're saved by faith and not by our works, but we're really not. It says by grace we are saved. It is grace. Grace always comes before faith. It is grace that gives us the very faith that we have. Grace is the gift of God. Grace is what enables us to believe. We see grace in Moses' life. I almost said Noah, you know. If for some reason, people always say Noah when they mean Moses, and Moses when they say Noah. It, it, it was grace in his life before he even knew of a need of grace, before he even knew faith. That grace went back to his parents. It says, by faith, when he was come to years, Last week we preached on the faith of Moses' parents. And we talked about how important it is to, to uh, have faith and that we would raise our children in faith and how important it is that they hear these things growing up and uh, 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 how important it is for our kids to, to be in church and how important it is not only to be in church, but that they pay attention during church. Now I know there are certain ages where you know they're, they're it's just beyond them. Uh, we've got a three-year-old granddaughter. It is beyond her to sit there and listen to a sermon. But at a certain age, they need to be made to pay attention. We need to be diligent. Um, when I was a kid, I was afraid not to pay attention in church. There would be repercussions if I was doing something other than listening to the preacher. And I've heard the excuse that, well, you know, they're, they're just, uh, they can't get anything out of a grown-up sermon. They'll get more out of it if they're made to pay attention than they, than they will if they're doing something, if they're laying in the pew. Moses' parents had the faith, and we preached on that last week. They had the faith that they, they you know, it's one thing to say you have faith, and it's, and it's one thing, you know, we live in a day and an age where we can bring our kids to church, but they were in danger of losing their lives over what they were doing. Boy, my, my heart is heavy over those Christians in Afghanistan right now that are just waiting for the door to bust open. That takes faith to raise your kids in a faith like that. And we know of other countries, some of the countries in Africa where this can happen. So last week we preached on, on, on the faith that the, the um, parents had and that part of that faith was grace shown to Moses by God, that God placed him in that situation with such parents. If you're here today and you were raised by godly parents, that's part of God's grace in your life, that, that he would put you in a situation where you would hear the gospel. Not only in church, but to hear the gospel in the echoes of your life. Then two weeks ago, we preached on the age of accountability. Now Moses had reached that age. It says, uh, uh, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years. There comes a time where your parents' faith is not going to suffice. There comes a, 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 a time where you have to have your own faith. 
that you have to have your own commitment, that you have to be willing to live by that faith. Thank God for godly parents. But they're only going to take you so far. They can only teach you so much at a time there comes a time when the faith needs to be your faith. The grace of God had preserved him for this purpose. And I said, well, Moses had a great purpose. He was to go and to lead his, uh, God's people out of the land of Egypt. He was to lead them out of bondage. He was to, to deliver to them the law of God. Moses had a great purpose. God has a purpose for your life. Now, probably none of us will ever be as famous as Moses. God has not called upon us to do, but God has a purpose in our lives. And, and, and God has preserved you up to this point for this purpose. My cousin, who I believe is in his 80s now, posted something early and uh, he said it, it wasn't luck that got me this far it was God and it reminded me of that line I wanted to comment and I messed up and never could find the post again but I, I, I wanted to pay, uh, uh, post on there to comment on there tis grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home it was the grace of God that placed him in that position it was the grace of God that, that preserved him for that purpose it's the grace of God has now become the faith of God in Moses in Moses' heart it affected what he refused the scripture said that he refused to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. In studying for this, in reading uh, Henry, Dr. Henry Morris's notes for this, he speculated that perhaps he being the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he was actually, actually in line to perhaps be Pharaoh one day. Don't know what the pecking order was. Don't know if he was first in line. Uh, uh, don't know where he was. But he would have been in that family. Being the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. In any event, he could have continued to live in the palace. He could have continued to live there among the Egyptians. He could have uh, stayed away, stayed out of the trouble of God's people. But he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He knew where his heritage was. He knew where his, 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 his people were. He knew who his God was. Now I know you have to connect the dots, but to me, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but Those days, those years, those weeks, that, that time period where his mother was allowed, his, his natural mother, Jochebed, was allowed to take care of him. I see that her teaching him. I, I see the, the, the father, perhaps, teaching him who he was, who his people were, and who their God was. It affected what he refused. You know, we have to refuse some things as God's people. We have to do it by faith. Egypt can be very tempting. <laughs> you know, carnally speaking, speaking as a man, you know, comparing a, a living in a palace or, or, or suffering with the slaves, who among us would, would, would choose to suffer with the slaves? 
As a matter of fact, we, we, we would probably even rationalize, well, I could do more good for them if I stayed in the palace and was an advocate for them. There was a day when Moses could no longer do that. As he saw one of his Hebrew brothers being beaten. It affected what he refused. We have to refuse some things. We can't have everything. Later on in this passage, it talks about the pleasures of sin for a season. We have to refuse the sins. And many a preacher has pointed this out. It's probably not the first time that, that we've heard it. Sin is pleasurable. Sin is ple the, the reason why sin is appealing is because it appeals to the flesh. No matter what that sin is, there is a pleasure involved. It affected what he refused. It, it, it affected what he chose. He chose to suffer the affliction with the people of God. There are choices that we make constantly. There are decisions we make constantly. There are crossroads that we face constantly. And our faith affects those choices. Our faith affects how we handle those choices. Our faith affects what we choose. It affected what he esteemed. In other words, what was valuable to him? It says he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater than the riches and the treasures that are in Egypt. For he had recompense or had respect for the recompense of the reward. Now, I was probably going to touch on this later on. I might be touching on I'm going to nail this one down like a hammer. But I'm going to go ahead and hit it down. Do you think it's odd that they're talking about Moses and it says that he esteemed the reproach of Christ? You don't have to be a Bible scholar to, scholar to realize that Moses was 1,500 years prior to the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. What an amazing thing that, that, that our Bible reveals to us here. There are many that teach that, that those Old Testament saints, those Old Testament believers, those that were redeemed in the Old Testament were re either redeemed by the keeping of the law and many in Christ's day, many in the Apostles' day, and many today, today believe that they are saved by the keeping of the law. Paul threw that garbage out the window. He said none of us are saved by the keeping of the law. We are condemned by the law because none of us could keep the law. There's only one that kept the law. And that's the one that Moses believed in. Moses was the lawgiver. But he wasn't basing his salvation on the law. He was basing his salvation in what God had revealed to him about Christ. And the promises that were made to Abraham, he understood that there was a Christ. By the revelation of God, and the only, the only way any of us believe in Christ is by the revelation of God to us. It is God that opens our eyes to who Christ is. He esteemed Christ. He valued Christ. He valued the recompense of the reward. He understood that there was a reward. Now this is before the New Testament which promises all these rewards for those that are found faithful. He already knew that. Brother Don read that, that, that passage out of Job. Where Job said, Job was before Moses, by the way. 
He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. He said, I know I'm going to see Him in the last day. The worms consume my body. I know my Redeemer liveth. These people believed in the Redeemer. What a shame it is that people nowadays, Christ has come. Christ has revealed Himself in the flesh. Emmanuel, God dwelt with us. And yet we do not believe in Him by faith in this day and age as a whole. Yet these people before the Word was made flesh understood and they valued Him to the point that they refused the things of this world and they chose to be afflicted and they valued the reward that comes from belief in Christ and faithfulness to Christ. Yeah, I said there's a reward in believing in Christ. Your reward is that uh, you are um, saved by grace. You're not condemned to hell. And you enter into heaven. And that's grace and that's a great reward. But there is greater reward out there to those that are faithful, to those that are willing to suffer affliction, to those that are willing, uh, as we spoke of those today in Afghanistan, that are willing to lay down their lives for their faith, to those that are willing to go out and to preach the gospel and to teach the gospel and to share the gospel with their neighbors and their family and, and, and all those around. There is a reward for those who are, will, will keep the word, speak the word, and live the word. It affected what he forsook. He forsook Egypt. Now Egypt is a type of the world. He forsook the, the world. But that's not all it says, is it? It's a great thing to, 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 to uh, uh, forsake the world. To follow Christ. But he understood that there was wrath in the king involved. Now, the writer of Hebrews uh, uh, assumes, and, and I assume as well, and I'm pretty sure we know the story of Moses. That he was raised for 40 years in, 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 the, in the Pharaoh's court. That he fled there to the desert of Midian and, and lived there for another 40 years, shepherding sheep. And at 80 years old, he came back to this king, this king and boldly went up to him and says, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. This was the king he was talking to. And yet he did. He forsook Egypt. He didn't fear the wrath of the king. Why not? Because he saw him who was invisible. He endured. He continued on. Remember, Pharaoh kept saying, okay, I'll let your people go. And then he did. And God brought a plague. He said, all right, all right, get rid of this plague and I'll let your people go. Ten times it took before he finally, Pharaoh had had enough. He said, okay, you can, you can go. And once he let him go, he went back on his promise again and chased him. Chased the people of Israel. Chased them to the Red Sea. <laughs> Looked and, and saw the, the, these people helpless between his army and the Red Sea. And was convinced the victory was his.
Moses endured all these things. Why? Because he saw that which was invisible. Faith allows us to see what is invisible. Faith allows us to see things that we have not yet received. It affected the things that he kept. It says he kept the Passover. God told them to do a strange thing. But God had been doing strange things all along, had he not? You know, God spoke to Moses out of a, a burning bush, and yet the bush was not consumed. And we think of that, we think of how miraculous that was, but as I said before, God was doing the miraculous all along. It was the grace of God that, that did everything along Moses' life where he would come and encounter God. He kept the Passover. He said, oh, God told him, he said, John, I'm going to kill the firstborn in every household here in Egypt. Tell your people and he gave them specific instructions on offering up the lamb, eating the lamb, keeping the Passover, taking the blood of the lamb, and painting the doorpost and over the door. He says, when my angel comes over and sees the blood, I will pass over that household. He will pass over that household. in keeping that Passover. The firstborn in Egypt, were pres or the, uh, of Israel in Egypt, were preserved. And we have a picture of the Christ. We have a picture of the Christ. So when Jesus appeared upon the scene, John the Baptist could point to him and say, Behold the Lamb of God. And everyone understood that he was the Passover. He is the salvation. It affected the things that he kept. Faithful cause you to keep the things of God. Faith will, will, will cause you to continue to come to the Lord's house when the rest of the world isn't. You always always have this thought in my head when, when uh, uh, you, some of you won't, didn't ever think I had thoughts in my head, but I had, had this thought in my head. We're driving to church. Unfortunately, he was coming the other way for us. This guy in a tractor pulling this great wagon full of hay. Six days a week he had to pull a wagon full of hay. Even during the day, all afternoon he had to pull that wagon full of hay. It's time to be in the Lord's house. It is time to keep the things of God. He has no recompense for the reward. We will keep the things of God. We will keep in our worship. We will, we will keep the things that He has committed unto us. We will keep the ordinances. We will keep the commission given to us. We will keep the faith and we will pass it on to everyone we can. His faith affected where he ended up. Verse 29. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians assigned to do were drowned. Our faith affects where we end up. 
our faith affects. No one is saved apart from faith. I don't care what the hard shells try to teach. I don't care what the primitives try to teach. No one is saved apart from faith. And no one has faith apart from the preaching of the Word of God. That is very clear in the Scriptures. That's why we keep the things of God. That's why we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Why? What was the, the reason that, that uh, this same writer, which I believe to be Paul, gave us for assembling ourselves, for not forsaking the assembly? That we might encourage each other, that we might provoke each other. He chose the affliction of God's people over the affection of Pharaoh's palace. He esteemed the reproach of Christ over the riches of Egypt. He forsook without fear because he saw that which was not visible. He kept the saving of the first of the Passover, saving the firstborn, which is a picture of the sacrifice of the only begotten. The scripture said that it was by faith when he was come to years. When he came to years, he had the faith. He had reached the age of accountability. We talked about his parents' faith. His faith, the faith that was shared with him. That faith would serve him. The scriptures tell us to train up a child in the ways in which he should go. And it will not depart from him. The faith that they had served him the rest of his life. But that faith could not save him because he had come to age. So not only did it, it was, I'm not saying, and obviously his parents' faith was important. But he also had to have a, a personal faith. Says, By faith, Moses. It was Moses' faith. It was a personal faith. He saw what was invisible. This could only be done once again by grace. If you're here tonight and you're saved, you're not saved because you're smarter than anyone else. You're not saved because you're better than anyone else. You're not saved because of anything other than the grace that God has given you. It affected every aspect of his life. I believe that true saving faith will affect everything in your life. What you do, what you say, what you think, where you go. Your very thoughts are formed by your faith. And his faith was in Christ. He said he saw the invisible. This affected his vision. Not only do I see a Christ that I've never met, not only do I love someone that I've never met, not only do I believe in someone that I've never met, but it causes me to see that He can save people around here. I didn't come down here to work in a hospital. I didn't come down here just to kill time. I didn't come down here because I had nowhere else to go. I came down here because God gave me a vision of what this church can be. Am I seeing it right now? Well, in a way I am. Because I'm seeing His faith here on a Sunday night. But I also, every time I get up here, 
I see these pews filled. Filled. So what do you base that on? I base that on faith. I don't base that on my preaching. I don't base this on that on my charisma. I believe that God can fill this building. Not just fill it. I don't want this building filled with people. I want this building filled with believers. That's what's wrong with churches. That, that, that are, I mean, a lot of churches are full with people, but few believers. If there were actual believers, they wouldn't put up with some of the garbage that's being preached from the pulpit. It affected his vision. It affected his values, the things he valued, the things the Bible says that he esteemed. It affected his vitality. It says that he endured. He endured affliction. He endured persecution. He endured, even, even when his own people turned against him, he endured. It affected his virtue. It says that he passed up the pleasures of sin. It affected his victory. The same Red Sea that drowned Egypt delivered Israel. The same path through that sea that Israel took devoured Pharaoh's army. This same Savior that we follow will condemn all that die in their sins without him. And he had a public faith. Moses' faith determined his actions. His faith determined his works. If you have faith, the scriptures say, your works will be determined by that faith. Would you stand?